Man, you come straight out of a comma. Man, you come straight out of a comic book. Man, man, you come straight out of a comic book. Comic book. Straight, straight out of a comic book. You come straight out of a comic book. Com- comic book. Straight, straight out of a comic book. You come straight out of a comic book, comic book. You come straight out of a comic book, man. Man, you come straight out of a comic book, man. Man, man, you come straight out of a comic book. You come straight out of a comic book. You come straight out of a comic book. Man, you come Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow, and of course, today with me, we got uh, Deuce Fury in the building, Dion Lack, and CT here, and we are talking about, of course, all the comic book stuff, all the pop culture stuff, but we're getting into something real specific, man. D23 just recently uh, came out, and as always, Marvel put their dicks on the table. Who you know that's, what, they just, that's what the D means. Yeah, that's what the D means. <laughs> This is exactly what the D means. Ooh, uh, D23, that's what dick on table 23 times. And they can and they put it on there 23 times. Yes. <laughs> that's a Ooh. wild sound bite right there. <laughs> Kevin Feige out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, Yo, man. and hey, hey, CT is not lying, man. They came out with it again for D23, rolling out, letting us know what's going on for the remainder of the year in phase four and looking deeper into the multiverse. Now, we're going to be a little cautious about this because, you know, CT is trying something new with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know he like being here. So he's finding that balance of some trailers he'll check out. Some information he'll look into. Bro, are you ready for this, Will? Let me, because here's what happened, man. Those of you guys who don't know, everybody watching, I make it my business not to watch trailers because I don't want to know what's going to happen, especially with things that I know I'm going to watch. If you want to show me a trailer, show me a trailer for a property I know nothing about, like a mystery or some type of action movie. It's like, oh, okay, I'll check that out. But when it comes to this science fiction, this comic book lore, I try not to watch this weekend will Farrell, young deuces the iron lack of lactose entertainment i saw the i saw the secret invasion trailer with sam jackson and i'm a massive sam jackson fan something that you want to be hear people say i love sam jackson so i was like you know what let me just watch 10 seconds of this and then just you know i'll i'll understand what's going on and then i'll just stop watching i'll wait for the for it to come out a minute and 10 seconds in i was like oh my god i can't look away it was that good this trailer told me nothing and that's why i loved it absolutely nothing but it got you so hyped like so i was like i don't know what's going on but i want to know yeah it was so contrast from Thor and She-Hulk, like, oh, we serious. We yeah. ain't playing. Which, you know by the way, saying? in defense of Will, Will has been wanting us to talk sooner. Soon as She-Hulk came out by episode two, he was like, we talking about it? I was like, Will, relax, Will. We, got, <laughs> we have to wait until this show is over. But I understand his excitement because every week something is happening. And for this show to yeah. only be 30 minutes, it's yeah, more. It's a lot. We're getting more in the 30 minutes of She-Hulk than we got in the 30 minutes of WandaVision, which was yes, also man. great. Yeah. She-Hulk yeah. is amazing. But anyway, I watched the trailer. I couldn't help it. And they told me nothing. Yes. <laughs> but they did tell us something. They did tell us something. And we already going to jump into it already, especially with Secret Invasion. Now, as you know, uh, CT, if y'all have, if, again, if you haven't watched any of this, if you are still sticking with CT's purity to cinema, Stop watching. <laughs> we about to talk. 
I like how you put that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he, always, he always likes to keep it pure. Keep it pure. <laughs> That's a solid way to phrase it. But uh, we will start off with Secret Invasion. As you know, the trailer did uh, drop at D23 with Sam Jackson, you know, the GOAT of acting. I don't want to hear Ooh. nothing else from nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't really tell us anything. But something they did tell us is a part of one of two of my hear me out. <laughs> so here goes my first one. Hear me out. HMO. Everybody's a fucking scroll. Everybody. Everybody. Bro. Everybody, and here's so but I, here, here's my wait, theory. Before, before on, you finish we, it, at, at some point we should all drop who we think are scrolls because I have about, I have I'm, some theories. I'm actually about to give you that one. So what I have learned that something uh, we've talked about on here is nothing's really coincidence when it comes to MCU. Somehow things all tie in, and so now one of my biggest theories that I have. Gave that kind of, I think, a, a, a more, more, you know, a more meat to the idea when I saw Secret Invasion. Mm. I think, hear me out. I think they're going to tie in the Incredible Hulk as a scroll. I think Edward Norton's Hulk was a scroll this entire mm. time. Let me tell you why. If you go back and watch the Incredible Hulk. Blonsky nor General Ross, and they don't have a Betty Ross. None of them interacted with Bruce Banner at all. They only interacted with the Hulk. And then if you go back to something Black Widow said in Avengers when they first found the Hulk, she said, you know, we have been keeping people off of your scent. What we didn't take that away from was them being able to send them on a wild goose chase. And as we also found out, Nick Fury and Agent Hill have been played by scrolls. Mm-hmm. So who's to not say they haven't been scrolls this entire time, keeping him off of Banner's sin and the fact that Banner may actually be on to this as well. So you said Edward Norton's... Uh... I oh, think Edward, I think Edward Norton Hulk was a scroll that entire time. That's just that's just silly. Silly. <laughs> because I mean that's a lot because we're following Edward Norton. If he was a scroll this whole time, they had to they had to fix a lot. He didn't have to practice, you know, his his temper. Like he would just he could just change it. He don't have to change it to him. Well, well, that's true, but also, too, scrolls are known to learn to start adapting to not only their humans, but also the people that have powers. So who's to say he wasn't learning how to mimic that, which is a part of this invasion? I would love to see him fix it with Edward Norton and uh, Terrence Howard of how they kind of <laughs> finagle those, like how to make it make sense into a so scroll that's thing. My, that's, that's one of my theories, is that Rhodey has been a scroll since the change. <laughs> <laughs> Since the change of actors, Rhodey has been a scroll. Because I, even, I the, do. even the even the way that Fury worded it, like you know, when he asked him, like, "What do you know about your detail?" and I'm just like, I just feel like at some point, like Rhodey, his whole his whole trajectory changed as far as his status as a military, as a uh, um, as a political figure, and everything. And it's just like he came really ambitious, really fast. You know what I'm saying? He was already working with the government way early in Iron Man 2. So it's like, I feel like since that change of the actor, I, they may not reference the actor change or anything, but I'm saying since Iron Man 2, he's been a scroll. It's a lot Here's to unpack because it's, oh, it's 10 years. They didn't think that far ahead. I know yeah. they did. <laughs> no, not saying they did. No, no, not saying they did. No, but if you wanted, not, this is if you wanted to clean it. If you want to yeah. clean everything up, especially with them not bringing the leader in for uh, Captain America 4. It's like, there's some way you have to be cleaning this up. And I can't just take, oh, yeah, I was a completely different guy back then. <laughs> Even though that was fire. I like the way they did that. Here's the thing. Number one, I applaud your reach, Will. Like, I, if there's nothing else I can do, i got to give you credit <laughs> on that reach. But just like Di said, that was ten years. Now, what Plus. we would love to Medusa's point is, we would love for them to wrap up everything and fix and acknowledge their right and wrongs, acknowledge the casting change, like you did with the Hulk for Terrence Howard and for Edward Norton. But 
I even think Sam Jackson is a scroll in this oh, yeah. movie. Like when you yep. look at the trailer, I was like, okay, he takes the eye patch off. All right, are we dealing with the real one right now or the guy who was at the very end of the trailer with the eye patch? It's like, which one is which? That's one I was thinking. Two, I do believe people that we wouldn't have thought were scrolls were scrolls, but I don't think any of the main people are scrolls because the best person to be able to have been a scroll would be Natasha Romanoff. And we know that Scarlett Johansson has done with the role. Yeah. But if she was a scroll, it would make the perfect sense because, okay, Clint sacrificed, she acted as her to be sacrificed, whereas she could have been gone in the blip. True. You know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a plot point that I think Feige would show compared to, yeah, Iron Man ain't dead. He was a scroll. It's like, okay. No, okay. No. No, 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 you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. No, Robert Downey can't that. come back. Yeah, so no, when no. do you think when do you think the switch happened with Samuel L. Jackson? Because I think he I actually got he... killed in, in in Civil War. No, I think Man, it happened it... after after the events of um, in Agents of Shield. And one of the things and, and I'm no going down, going, well, yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> but going, <laughs> going, well, but here's the thing: going back into like way back, like. The, um, in in I think it was Captain Marvel where he referenced that he doesn't he can't eat triangles, but then you see a scene where he's actually eating a sandwich in triangles, and it's like if that's what was something that Samuel like well Nick Fury stood on, then that was obviously a scroll when he was eating that sandwich that way. So like, and, you know, like I said, I'm, we deep in the theory bag, but that's and, where, the that's where and the series did say that it was going to be a crossover type series. So he may have a point to that, you know, Shield thing as well. My yeah, theory is, Agents of Shield. He told Coulson, he said, "I'm always." He said something like, "I'm always around," but I'm go like, "I'm." He that was when he said he was going to do his departure or something of that nature. Like the way he worded it, I wish I had it verbatim, but the way he worded it. It sounded like he was leaving, but he's always still going to be around. And, you know, so it's like, I feel like that, like that was that moment where he actually went into space to do whatever he's doing. And he, he, he made that deal with the scroll. I feel like Nick Fury is dead, has always been a scroll. And the way Secret Invasion is going to end is another Nick Fury is going to come out. He's going to take <laughs> off his Samuel Jackson mask and it's going to be the white version. <laughs> Oh, it's no, gonna be no, David no. Hasselhoff again. It's gonna be David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> and he put his patch back on. Let's get to work. <laughs> That's the invasion. Not the whole. <laughs> <to work. laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just like I feel like because Agents of Shield, they're not gonna acknowledge anything from Agents of Shield. They realize that was a mistake, and they're gonna they let did. that be. I, you see, I, that's what I thought until they showed uh, Black Bolt, and Black Bolt being Black Bolt from the actual Inhuman series. So that is sitting in Human series, but that also tied in with Agents of Shield. That's how it was a spinoff. Yeah, yeah, but so that so Shield Shield is somewhere I mean, in this the Agents of Shield. Here's how I would give y'all that. This is why I can't give it to you. Because the first thing that they did on episode one of Agent Shield, Agents of Shield was brought back Coulson. Yep. Then yeah, they so what so down so the line they admitted he was a uh, he was a robot or something or a clone yeah, robot some something like that. Yeah. Kind of like so if that's the case, movie. we've had over a decade to bring Coulson back in any <laughs> of the films, and they have not. Yeah, so not to let him. that go, they showed that they're not acknowledging Agents of Shield outside of Captain. Uh, I mean, outside of Agent Carter being Captain Britain in the alternate universe, I'll give you Black Bolt, even though this is how much the audience didn't give a fuck. When they showed Black Bolt in Doctor Strange, everybody was like, oh, who's, who's, this? who's this guy? Yeah, everybody yeah. was like, uh, Because what I told y'all, <laughs> what I said to y'all, I was like, I thought that was a Mexican dude. When you I know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Which also, yeah. we're not even going to talk about how horrible, how horribly they butchered Black Bolt. He said a whole sentence and the entire universe didn't explode. So that was ridiculous. I'm but sorry. I'm sorry. The fact that he would have, from what I understand about Black Bolt, is him saying, uh, that would destroy a planet. Yeah. You Y'all ain't close yeah. proximity from him, too. Yeah. Y'all was kind of like, yeah, they're right next to him. Another? 
This was crazy. Like that Bose commercial. Remember that? Remember that old Bose commercial when you sit in front of the speakers and you like this? It was <laughs> this like that. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to go down. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up with? Okay, so we saw Secret Invasion. That will lead to a whole bunch of surprises. But yes. what is the casting news? For Fantastic Four, bro, because that <laughs> when y'all posted that they they posted a picture in the group chat of Fantastic Four's casting, and one of you guys was like, "Oh, this might be fake though," and I'm like, "How do you fake that?" Like it looked like people were looking at it. They they did. Yeah. They very much faked it. And me being yeah, somebody they, they, that used Photoshop often, yeah, it was it damn. was a it was Photoshop, but it was yeah. a great Photoshop because. Mm. Um, they were, I believe, they were correct about the director that's uh, going to be in Fantastic Four, and mm -hmm. um, that's what Kevin Feige did announce. But he has not announced anything to do with the Fantastic Four casting, anything mm -hmm. from Doctor uh, Doctor Doom or any of the actual Fantastic Four. Um, now, the only one we do know is um, I, I forget her name at the moment, but it was the woman that played in Ryan Reynolds' Free Guy, the one that he was in love with. Um, mm. she is the one that is they say is closest in line to be cast as Sue Storm because, no. um, yeah, because the way the no. yeah, yeah, I don't because the thing is, I like from what I read was they're trying to bounce this two different ways either Mr. Fantastic and Sue Storm are going to be big names, while uh. Uh, the um, thing and torch are no names, or they're gonna flip it to where torch and thing are big names, and Sue and Fantastic are newcomers. So they're trying to find that balance within the two of them, but they haven't decided on which way that they're gonna go. Here's the thing if anybody other than Krasinski is Mr. Fantastic, Fe I don't even think Feige would do that because he knows that it was fan casting to make him Mr. Fantastic in the first place and to see how people reacted to it. He wouldn't bite himself in the ass and cast somebody else. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I hope not either. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to keep having so many people have different variants of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I do want some that's just like, yo, this is the solid fantastic four person throughout the multiverse, like they were doing strange. We only ran into his versions. And right. So, it I wasn't like we saw, first of all, we're not even gonna talk about how much of a we expected madness in the multiverse. We didn't expect what they gave us. So anyway. <laughs> multiverse of mildness. Is Man, it was, was so mild. But when we look at the casting choices, I do love that when we saw Captain Britain, it was like, okay, cool. This is actually Agent Peggy Carter that we know in our universe. And this happens to be comic book lore. When we saw uh, Rambo being Ms. Mar Captain Marvel, that also makes sense because we know that that character was supposed to be Captain Marvel in our universe. So these things fit, right? Yeah. So I don't want to see a variant be so completely different than the person that we've already been identified, I mean, have been familiar with, be the, the hero. Yeah. Like, don't show me. I would have loved to see Tom Cruise, and they said they reached out to him, but scheduling didn't make sense. But if you were to show me Hammer, uh, what was his name? Um, Ethan Hammer, not Ethan Hammer. Army. Sam Rockwell. Oh, yeah. Right? Sam Rockwell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you would have showed me him as Iron Man and another variant, I'd have been like, come on, man. Now y'all going to, y'all reaching too far, even though he read for the role of Iron Man. Like, I get why it would have been dope, but it wouldn't have been because we're like, come on, man. Don't do not do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because that's because the yeah. idea was floated around that like the people who who tested for these roles that didn't get the role would show up as a variant. And that would have that would have been like a really dope nod. They'd be like, oh snap, like we can see how that person would have looked into it. Anybody else, like, yeah, it's it's not going to have the same oomph because we haven't been like with what the MCU has successfully did is they turned everybody into deep diver comparison conspiracy theorists. Like we pick apart everything to the point now where it was like like it's kind of like dang like you kind of painted yourself in this in this corner like all right well now we got what people love and then now people fell in love with these theories and it's like so we can really like we can pull from that or we can do something completely different but then it's like if you do something completely different it loses it's like ooh, like it's like oh yeah that's pretty cool but like, it would have been really dope if you would have gave us this and so it's like it's kind of a weird space that they're in with those even those fan castings yeah yeah 
but um, so we're gonna we're gonna see what they do when it comes to Fantastic Four. I think I think it's smart to take their time with it, like Kevin Feige is doing, because of the simple fact that in in all perspective, you've had two flops when it comes to Fantastic Four. Like the first one, we 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 it, we you somewhat enjoyed. Then you know, yeah, I butchered the second one. Then you rebooted it, and that one just didn't come together well. So it's like now everyone's looking at this one and fantastic four does play such a vital role in everything that's coming up that you have to play this right and get people that's going to be able to help you walk through the next decade playing these characters so i'm glad that they're taking their time i don't know if we discussed this but how we decided from us the four of us how we gonna uh add the 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 x-men or the fantastic four now that we already have a 15 plus year universe how do you add those mutants into the like oh, all I of a sudden I, because they they have history they have childhood you know you know we talk about patrick patrick i uh, not patrick but uh, uh professor xavier you know he, him as a child you know magneto yeah. as a child like that's important to the origin right yeah so should so we just I, bring him from another universe i think this is going to be a classification thing so like mm-hmm. i believe like they they slow rode us with Miss Marvel, where the guy was telling her, like, hey, you're something different. It's like a mutation. And I believe, but especially with what we've been getting in She-Hulk, and I know we haven't talked about it yet, and we're going to talk about when it's done, but I believe that they're going to jump right into the uh, anti-mutant act, right? Where it's, yeah. And where they're going to say, where they're, what's going to end up happening is the government's going to get involved and say, we've been calling everybody superpower beings, but no, there's actually mutants as well, and they're going to start classifying what's a mutant what's a superpower being and they're going to go straight into all right all mutants need to be have to have the uh the the um what's the thing i can't think of it no no the uh, inhibitor they got to have the inhibitor so they can't turn like i believe that that's like what she hawk is setting up is setting up the groundwork for the government to say oh yeah that's a good idea we need to do that for everybody that we classify as mutants and so that way they don't have to go back into an origin where these mutants came from it's like oh we've been just calling everybody superpower beings but now we know what this is superpower this is a mutant and that's what's going to start that and i think and i think too they may roll out kind of like how they've been throwing out little clues like i know again like i do said we are going to try to save most of what we can about She-Hulk for when it ends. But one of the little like clues they gave was her being on a computer and as a side article that showed a guy with claws fighting in a bar. I think we might get those same things like with the Mutant Registration Act as like background tertiary clues. So there Mm -hmm. might be more work. uh, Appreciate it. Uh, so, like, we might be watching an episode of She-Hulk where she's passing by a television, and then one of the anchors are talking about, you know, we now go to uh, a somewhat of a specialist on this new mutation, Charles Xavier. And so you don't see him, but you hear them say that, or you see it on, like, the little ticker tape and stuff like that. Hey, and the, that's news, the-, the news articles be giving us. Yeah, and it starts to introduce you, like, okay, so there is a Charles Xavier here. And what has he been doing? So if that's that, if that's there, then that means there's a Magneto here, which also brings me to my other. Hear me out. <laughs> what if the Quicksilver we saw in the MCU was never real? Keep talking. What if Wanda had made him up that entire time? Oh boy. Ooh. That'd be wild. So imagine <laughs> if he did Yeah, he didn't survive the blow up. It's just her. And notice if you see WandaVision, they don't show him. You know, we know for obvious reasons and stuff like that. Yeah. But they could have shown him. And we see times now where it looks more like she went through all this. And as a trigger, she used that as a coping mechanism. Another thing that brings me as to why Evan Peters is there. Now, again, like how we were talking about a while back, I feel like nothing is coincidence. I think Charles Boner, the person they put in there, I think that actually is her sibling, and they were separated at birth. And I think his powers haven't been activated yet. And another reason that tells me that is because how did he get the classic costume is from the dreams from his other variant, which is the Quicksilver from Fox. Jesus Christ. It's a lot to unpack. That's an well, one, to okay, go like back that. to your point about Wolverine, I just looked up the Easter egg, did not notice that. 
Oh, yeah. And wow. So yeah. you see the hand angel? with metal claws. I, I, I think when, when that episode dropped, that's when no. that's when Will Ferrell said, Hey, are we going to talk about this? They also said, Why is it a man hanging out the uh, yeah, they a giant the statue? I, said, I was like, yes! finally. <laughs> finally. Because <laughs> nobody's talked about the fucking <laughs> statue. That is terrifying, yo. Extremely. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. bro. So that but because of both of those, like how they did it in um Miss Marvel and in She Hulk, that's how I believe why I believe that it's not gonna be like a big thing, like oh mutants are here now. It's going to be more because then to me that's more realistic as well, too. Where the government where they figure out like, all right, we need to do something and we need to govern these things. And I believe that like I said, it's gonna Bruce and you know and, and she all they're gonna feel bad because it's really their tech and their idea, you know, that gonna cause this this racism towards mutants. And it's I I think like like I said, we'll get into that with the She Hawk, but like that I feel like this series is setting up everything. Speaking of which, movie. Wolverine, first of all, speaking of which, shout out to Hugh Jackman being an amazing actor. Being an amazing actor. Yes. If you look back at clips of him as Wolverine, he looks nothing like him. Like, I'm not even no. talking about height. Hair, no. No. nothing. I'm like, no. this is not, this was not a good <laughs> casting. But it was a great, no. he did great with the role. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we yes. can't picture nobody else, though. I mean, I oh, you can. You can. <laughs> Tom, Tom Hardy is always going to be my guy for Wolverine. Tom Hardy. Still. Tom Hardy, yeah. Flash. He shouldn't have been Venom. That's what he should have been. He shouldn't have been Venom. He should have been Wolverine. Yeah. That was yeah. who, Because you know what I always think about is, the part I always want to see, they don't never show when Wolverine be trying to pull Gene from Cyclops. Yeah. Like, I want to see that shit. Like, like, and just but now picture Tom Hardy doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then looking at Cyclops, you want to go, bro. You want yeah. you know what? You when we talk about missed out castings, bro. I always said this. I said this since I was a little boy. Jack Nicholson would have been an incredible Wolverine. And like if you just look at face. He looks like Wolverine. A young Jack Nicholson, if they would have done him as Wolverine back then, fire. That that would have been dope. It would have been, but um, we know the storytelling would have been, been no, A young good. Jack Nicholson, that would have been dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With sideburns, that would have been well, Because he looks chop, like him. Chop, yeah. Mutton chop, yeah. I thought that, that as a kid, I'm like, man, how come he don't play Wolverine? But then you realize that even as a child, we were 15 years away from an X-Men movie, and he was yeah, already yeah. old when he played yeah. the Joker. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, that, like you said, that is something we missed out on. Um, yeah. So an another thing that they did drop was a little bit more footage from uh, Wakanda Forever that's uh, yep. coming out this month. Um, oh, just just out this month? oh, no, no, I'm sorry, November. November. I'm oh, so sorry. Like, I was going to say, geez. <laughs> I'm thinking we in November. I, I can't think of his name, but I think it'd be a good Wolverine. He don't look nothing like him, but short and yoked and it can fight uh the main character that's on um the kingsman i know you're gonna say that his name is uh, oh, uh, uh taron egerton yeah. yeah i was about to say tiger i like him <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw him on the emmys last night and i was like oh man he he yeah. has the build for it but have we ever seen him do an american accent yes when uh he has a he, he has a show right now he's in prison right now he does like his boston exit um uh, I can't think of the name of it, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know he did anything with an American I mean, accent. I, I mean, but here, here's the question: what, what accent are we supposed to be going for? Because ain't he supposed to be Canadian? He is. Hey, bub. Yeah. Hey, bub, don't you know? I got. He's these. never said <laughs> nothing. Here, y'all. Hey, the adding the don't you know takes away all the fearsome of Wolverine. Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, like you're there, and as soon as you hear the don't you know, you're like, come on, bro. <laughs> don't you know? Eh? Eh? You put them little claws away, but you want to drink? <laughs> you want to drink? Wanna drink. Oh, Get my man a pint of beer, man. <laughs> it would be easier to go through. So the only problem with the mutants having existed so long without us knowing would be Professor Xavier and Magneto. You can get yes. around everybody else, but you well, can't get around those two. You you could get you could get around Xavier because of the fact of him just being a specialist and it never really being brought up in public like that. Ooh, okay. That's that's where you can get with him. Uh, what? Magneto, Ooh, 
Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Dion, because you you see like you got a good one. <laughs> what if <laughs> what if Professor Xavier gets sick and then he, his his powers gets turned off and now all the, he been hiding the mutants this whole time, so they're not being visual to like they're they're being you know exposed. When he gets sick, his powers goes down and now they are been here this whole time like scrolls. That makes sense, except now you're going to introduce a sick Professor X. No, no, no. I mean, temporary, as in like he gets knocked out into a coma or something. He just, you know, he, he'll be back at the end of the episode or whatever. But, you know. Some, hmm. uh, so, you know, some, something that could go like that what? is if he was caught. If he got caught In and they were experimenting room. on him and something like that happened now. Another way I go with it is rather than them forgetting, what if he's the one that's holding all of them from keeping their X gene dormant? And then when he does let his stuff down, everybody now has their X gene activated. So he instead was of so protect this entire yeah, so to, instead I said that's like I was a mutant. He was trying to he was trying to no no because. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like it's the same thing like how they did with Doctor Strange, but rather than them forgetting that mutants exist, it's just like, yo, like you forget like that your power is dormant. And so because remember, like how they did with Deadpool, like you have to try to activate their powers. That's how the X gene work. If it doesn't automatically turn on, you have to put them through harsh conditions in order for it to activate. Yeah. Mm. Because because Professor Xavier, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm trying to remember, he does hide the school at some point, right? Like where he hides it from, so yeah. like he could, and so and do we have a striker in the MCU already? Like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm getting the MCU. No, 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 no. no. The only ones we've okay, had is because, like General Ross and them. That's it. Okay, because I was going to say because like then I was going to say to kind of go a little bit on what Dion was saying. If he was being experimented on by striker, then then that could be where it's like yeah, he's being forced to hide all mutants until whatever experiment breaks free or whatever but yeah that is the, those those are the um the two people that is like it's hard because like i said with xavier like i said his whole thing is about you know saying hey we are here but we're not a threat versus uh you know magneto who's like fuck the government so it's like yeah we're what, what were they doing uh you it, know or he could be in jail to- though magneto could be in jail because like even like his acts and what he did could be covered True. up and, and hidden and stuff like that. And that could be something that either S.H.I.E.L.D. reveals or uh, the Thunderbolts actually reveal. Ooh, that's got chill. Yeah, what's, uh, uh, what's her face? They could be the ones that, like, they we see, or She-Hulk. She-Hulk finds that out and stuff like that. It's like, yo, they've been having this person who's been kept underground, just like how they did in Fox. And they come to mm-hmm. find out it's Magneto. And, they, you know, and again, they ain't even got to say it just yet. It's just like, okay, who is it? It's a guy with special abilities who can control metal. And then mm-hmm. that's it. Here's the issue that I have, completely random, but before the topic we just got into, Edward Norton was really an incredible Hulk. And here's my problem. If the fact that he was such a great, incredible Hulk... Okay, here's what happened with Spider-Man. We know that Sony owns Spider-Man. They found a way to make a deal with Marvel for Marvel to have Spider-Man in their films and, and vice versa. Universal apparently had the exact same deal with Marvel for that first Incredible Hulk film. So just because you changed character actors of Edward Norton to Mark Ruffalo, why wouldn't that same deal exist to where you could still do more Incredible Hulk movies? I've heard they say, we can't do it because we don't have the permission of Universal. But it's like, where did that deal go just because you switch actors? CT. Yeah. You just blew my mind. Thank you. (laughs) What if Mark Ruffalo is a scroll? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) you know why that doesn't work because she hulk exists now so oh, if oh, his oh. blood wouldn't have got in her she wouldn't have if i was if i was universal let me tell you what i'll do i hire Edward Norton to get it and do another incredible hawk. <laughs> just fuck up people. I'm like, yo, what you doing? Hey, I still own incredible hawk. Let's yeah, talk yo, about hey, when hey, he yo, became yo. red hawk. <laughs> yo, like, yo, you fucking up. <laughs> and as yo, Easter, Eric, and <laughs> and an Easter egg at the end of that movie, you see Edward Norton sitting down and they trying to work on the fourth one. And here come Eric Banner. Be like, hey, man, look, you can put me back in too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, just how this can work. You know, that's how horrible 
That's how horrible the Eric Banner movie was. Nobody even mentions him as far as the Hulk actors. They're like Edward Mark Norton, Hulk. Mark Ruffalo, Luke Rigno. Right, right. He, he, he totally the nineties cartoon. Nineties cartoon. Luke so, Rigno. I, I blame Circuit City for my hate for that movie because it was that's on their funny. demo disc, and when, that's when I used to work at Circuit City. And they used to play it over and over and <laughs> over, and I just picked it apart so much that I end up hating that movie. Like I tell you what, like Dragon Ball Evolution territory. The game was fire. The Incredible Hulk video game uh, that was based on Edward Norton, incredible. No pun intended. I don't. I don't know who was making. <laughs> I don't, good one, by the way, I don't know who was making mo- video games for movies back then. Within like that ten years, but yeah, yo, they were on it because even like Wolverine Origins, the movie was trash, but yeah. that video yeah. game, was I, had it on PC. I had it on yeah. PC. The all of yeah, it, like man. I remember Batman Begins, the movie game was incredible. That game was so incredible. By the time um Goth uh, Arkham Knight came out. I was like, is this going to be good? Because the movie version right. of the game was way better. And then I played it. I'm like, okay, this is good. But those yeah. straight to, and then the this is one that was really bad. Iron Man, the movie video game, was horrible because of the flight mechanics. Now, that's one thing. A lot of people give Marvel's Avengers on a PlayStation a horrible name. I play it every day. But that game. <laughs> I'm on it now. I'm on it now. Just so you something know, that I'm, they I'm, did perfectly was the flight mechanics. Yeah, like you can yeah. fly and it's so believable the yeah, way it yeah. goes. Like, you know, easy to learn. Which is why we always will say when we talk about those games, you need to make a fucking Superman game. All right. Facts. You need to make one. Stop playing. But can Man, we, can we playing. point out the best X-Men game was Clone Wars from Sega Genesis, though? Come on, man! You ain't gonna disagree. Never played. Wait, I, I, I agree with you. I just I didn't I don't recall it being called Clone Wars. I thought it was just X Men on Sega Genesis. No, X Men Clone Wars. It was X Men yeah. Two when yeah. they were literally fighting each other. Yep. Uh, now another one though. Another one though too world. is uh, Mutant Academy, the fighting game they had. Mm. Oh yeah, no. If y'all ain't played that, they had X Men had a whole fighting game like Mortal Kombat called Mutant Academy. It what was, was the so budget for video games back in the 90s? Because I feel like a million games came out that were amazing <laughs> and none of us knew anything about it. But nowadays, we know every single... Like, if you yeah, name yeah. a game, even if I don't play it, I've heard of it. I've heard of it, yeah. You know what I mean? I but the 90s the were making so many more. I think it was part of the budget. I think, like, if you have a blockbuster movie, you get a video game. Because, like, I like a sleeper video game that I love was Terminator 2. Because that mm-hmm. first opening scene in it, like it's the it's the car chase and you run. Like I used to love that game, but like that's every movie that was a blockbuster. Matter of fact, it wasn't even it wasn't even exclusive to blockbusters. I feel like that was just the model. It was like no, nah, it, it was, was yeah, it was like a whole package. Was McDonald's a Burger King. Now you get a video game. <laughs> like yep. like it was like no, nah, oh, remember it was a, you get a whole package with it back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Like when Jumanji came out, Jumanji came. You got a video game. You had the McDonald's run, the toy run. They had a TV mm-hmm. show. Everything same thing with Men in Black, and like mm-hmm. it was like a whole thing where it's like, well, it rolled out. It rolled out on every way for you to go see it when they knew it was gonna be a hit. Yeah, yeah. that's a fact. The budget was crazy, but like video games, man, there were so many. Like the games that y'all just named for Sega, I'm like, I didn't even know that existed. But I had games like Eternal Champions, Superman Doomsday. I had a uh, Strider, which was freaking incredible that nobody heard of. And it's like all these things. And I'm like, X-Men had a game like that? And they're like, yeah, several. So yeah. when PlayStation came out, I started hearing about all these different games because, you know, it's a different kind of animal. But anyway, um, what's next? Um, I will answer to that, though. Uh, it was Blockbuster that really kept us on all of that stuff because... That's what had everything lined up for you to see. Like, oh, I ain't never seen this game. It got to go try it if it didn't come out on the demo. So that's and why you had a week, and you had a week to beat it because you had to turn it back within a week. So, like I said, I feel like Blockbuster, the the death of Blockbuster <laughs> has stopped the um, the diversity in video games that you play. Because you mm-hmm. will go to Blockbuster and you will try something for a week, and because yep. you only yep. got that week, you're like, all right, I'm gonna put in mad hours to try to beat this within this yeah. week. Yeah. And I was like, I completed so many random games that I'm like, why did I play that game? It's because I got it from Blockbuster. I had a week to beat it, and then I mm. went and got something else the next week. Can you think yep. about the Can person who came, came up, bro? Up, bro? Like, think about yeah. 2008 or nine, 
And the person that went to Blockbuster and rented, because you know, towards the towards the thick of it, you could rent a yeah. whole system. Like yeah. if you didn't have a system, you could rent a system. So think about the person who rented a system, rented like six or seven games, got like eight or nine DVDs, and then Blockbuster went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> and you never had to return it. <laughs> They tell so, that story to this day. They like hey, anytime somebody, let me tell you about my come up in two thousand nine. <laughs> so um, let me let me definitely give y'all the answer for that because uh, I used to work at I was that nigga. <laughs> I, used, I used to work at Blockbuster. <laughs> um, that's definitely now. I will say they stopped depending on if it wasn't uh like a privately owned Blockbuster. Mm. Blockbuster didn't do systems no more. Oh. Um, matter of fact, the only way you could do it was you actually had to go to the website if you wanted to rent it. But it was like a whole process that basically made you not want to do it. Like uh, you, just, you just basically needed to go buy buy and rent out a machine yourself or buy. Mm -hmm. one. Oh, um, yeah, remember on last days though, it was like, hey, we get rid of the movies, two two dollars. Yo, uh, that's all just bro. Two like, lives. <laughs> when I tell you taking inventory and having to spend the entire night shifting one disc. From their old DVD case, their new DVD case to the old one with the little yellow latch on there, so you can sit them in these bins that were like three for four ninety nine, oh five everybody. for fifteen ninety nine, and it was all these. I'll never forget a history of violence, King Kong, the Gospel, mm. and Shamar Moore, mm. fucking, they don't even uh, mix. Madea, they don't Madea even go goes together. to jail. <laughs> all of those just big ass stacks in a whole. They don't even go case. together. They don't even go together, but they just like people like, yo, you can get all these four for three ninety nine because mm. we had to get rid of everything. And when I tell you, I got everything. four booklets of DVDs over here from that sale. <laughs> booklets. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I got as much as I could, man. But um, yeah, buddy. just to hop back into the Marvel stuff. Um, uh, some some things were big news. A lot of things were kind of just like, you know, continuations. Like we said uh, a little bit earlier, they did show Wakanda forever. Um, they extended the scene of Angela Bassett talking at the uh, press conference and stuff and just really kind of answering the questions of just really showing them that like, hey, yeah, we may have lost Black Panther. We may have lost my husband, but like, don't get it twisted. Just because we don't have those, don't think you can just run up in here and take our shit. Mm. He's still a strong front. So that's basically what she was trying to make sure like everyone got across. And that was a scene that they showed. But I don't want to jump too much into it because, like I said, don't want to give too many details away. But yeah. it does seem like there's going to be a, a, a great story in Wakanda forever based off of just Wakanda itself and not even, you know, talking about Namor and what he's bringing. Um, yeah. They showed a little bit of Ironheart as well. Um, they also uh, displayed like her new suit and what uh, she'll be going through. They say it's actually a lot darker than what we're going to be like, like, you know, like normally accustomed to like this. Mm. Island, you gonna, Like, yeah, like Ironheart is supposed to be like, you're going to really see like how she gets everything. Hmm. So um, that was great. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, Ant Man Quantum Mania. Uh, now that one, they may have given a little bit of something away. Uh, they extended the conversation that, of the trailer that they shown at the uh, previous presentation. They extended the scene a little bit of Kang and Ant Man talking. And so what it kind of revealed is that this may go back into classic Ant Man style. This may actually be a heist movie. <laughs> inside the quantum realm because it appears as if someone has stolen something from this version of Kang that mm. we're going to see in this movie. And for what they're saying, it might be that he may be recruiting Ant-Man to play, well, you know, as, as how he moves these pieces to get mm -hmm. back what was taken from him. Hmm. I love a heist movie, and I feel like that's where Ant-Man 2... Here's the thing. When you get... You gotta, you gotta stick with who brought you to the party. Right. Yeah. So Ant-Man one was so great because it was a heist movie. Yes. It was like, this is incredible. I never would have thought to even see this because I was expecting, you know, a traditional origin story of a superhero. And this wasn't in an origin story of a superhero. This is the origin story of this particular man getting this suit because the original Ant-Man is the one who gave it to him. So part two was we have family drama. We have to do this. And it's like, eh, it's not really what I wanted. So if you're telling me that part three is a heist movie, now you're getting right back into what made me fall in love Let's with. Let's talk about the best heist, though. What's that? Thanos Infinity War. Oh, that man. Was, that was his movie. He was, it was that his was his heist movie for real. 
<laughs> yo, yo, imagine, imagine if that was shot like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> And if, if, if you look at him as a protagonist, and he had a bunch of haters trying to stop him, like yo, yeah. you understand? I have a plan here, right? But <laughs> just imagine, just imagine him holding the hammer from Thor. You want to know how I got all of them? Here it was. It's like these. <laughs> here it was. <laughs> That's why that movie was so dope. If you start looking at Infinity War as the origin story of Thanos, and that he's the hero, yeah. it's an incredible movie. Incredible. Oh, yeah. In, incredible. In, anyway, it's still incredible. Yeah, because he <laughs> won. He, like, he, he was like, hey, he I have a won. And I saw him. Like, let's not for, like, like let's not really forget. Endgame is a two-hour movie about how white people cheating to take their win back. They lost mm. that. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, they you had you had to bend you had to bend reality laws to win. That's how bad y'all lost. Be like, yeah. talk about Can you, I, go, you gonna go back in time after I won already? That ain't fair. Back in time, ain't right I, for that. yo, yo. Can I tell y'all when I when when Thor threw that 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 uh a stormbreaker and hit him, and I was like, yes, and I was standing up, he's like, uh, you should have went for that. I was like, no, <laughs> I remember Bro. all over again. I was like, yes, yeah, every, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody, Thor. That's when you watch it. When you watch Infinity War and Endgame, what makes that that one two Ooh. so dope is that they literally they showed us a threat. They made us th think that we was going to win. Then they yeah. made us thought, think that we won, and yep. then immediately they said ah ah, and you like it's like even when when like I said that moment that Dion had, everybody had it because we was like yes, you got yes. the shot. And when he said you should have went for the head, we was like. Oh no! They they hit that hand. They hit the hand the whole time. You was over like, yeah. Was like, see me, oh. see me. I was I was very upset because I was like, you know what? A black Thor would have hit him in the head. Uh. A black Thor would have hit him straight in the head first. Fuck this! I ain't I ain't taking no chances. I'm going straight for oh, the head. You 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 did it the white the white way. But you he did throw it from like 300 feet away. So, he did. We, we, hey, that, that was actually some clear, clean accuracy, yeah. though. If you, like from how far he threw it away, but the <laughs> silence that went along, that went across the theater at that moment was it, you like it was so quiet. It sounded like it was in a silence room. And so nothing, was, nothing was happening at that time either for like a good thirty seconds. You was like, yeah, yo, what just happened? <laughs> and we in our, in our hands, we try to figure out how to how to undo. We like. Uh, Dr. Strange can undo it. Uh, no, he can't. Um, <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> the Hulk! Come on, the Hulk! Help! Come on, the Hulk! Like, Yo, and Hulk. then you start feeling bad because you was like, oh, man, they the guy win the soul. No, not Rocket! No, oh, man, don't, don't do no Rocket like that, man. Come on. Oh, man. Don't do it like that. Man. I'm sweating all over again. I'm getting anxiety all over again, man. Yo, my, and we no, had to no, wait. No. We had to wait a whole year. Yo, because how it went off too, because it was just like yeah. he just sat down, looked off, and it just went off. I was like, Oh, I know that they did in this movie. Oh, I know y'all didn't just leave us. <laughs> like I know you just didn't put these roots on. He did a backflip in the portal. He did a backflip in the portal. Like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he did the CT. Man. <laughs> but yo, hey, real shit. He knew he did it. He, he low key hit a fist bump. He didn't even click it. He said, uh. Bro, <laughs> that shit hurt because they didn't. They didn't show no uh, Easter egg. They didn't show no final trailer. They said, Bro, "Get out!" Went, it just went. Yep, that the, the theater I was at. The theater I was at. They turned the lights on right at like at when. Wow. They, they they was fully invested in that theater, and I was just like, oh, "You just you got to see everybody just sit there like." What, Bro, they, what? Treated, they, they treated us like two dollar hookers. Took us on a ride. And said, Get out! Get out! Get out! But I know we we're moving it on because I do want to talk about the Thunderbolts because Feige yeah. has confirmed that the Avengers are officially dissembled. Yeah, and then the Thunderbolts is the team that you know that's the rocking team right now. Yeah. I know that hurts, man. To know that the Avengers are done. And I also hate how Feige just says stuff like like we all knew. You know, like since the Avengers are done. We're like, what? You but you said <laughs> you said there's yeah, two more minute. movies coming. No, no, yeah, no. They're you, done. You, you you just named this shit Avengers secret. Yeah. Who, who, who who these Avengers you talking about? <laughs> done. Then to see the fact that 
first, all the Avengers are done. When we see Thunderbolts, Thunderbolts, if you look at that poster, bro, respect to all the actors. That shit looked like a TV movie, bro. Yo, bro. He already saw what I wrote. This is oh, this, this is Marvel's Expendables. This or, is their Expendables for yeah, sure. Or the DC <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow. That's what this is. That's they gotta what this tie is. In all the people, they gotta tie it in is. all the people that's still alive, man. I get it. They no, because bringing in Ghost from Ant Man, that that character wasn't even a strong villain. Then no. you're gonna bring in female Taskmaster, which also wasn't a strong villain. And then you show us Julia Reifus, do you Lurie Dreyfus at the end, like she's this massive character, it's like, oh, this is about to be some bullshit. Then, yeah, first off, that artwork didn't look nothing like her because I was like, who, who is this, yeah. this, this yeah. woman in, on the right side? And yeah. where is Abomination? Like, Nowhere to be only, found. There's only three characters that I'm excited for in this whole. It's like, okay, of course, it's Winter Soldier. Uh, I, like I said, um, U.S. Agent. America, yeah, U.S. Agent, and then uh, Wanda's sister. I'm uh, not Wanda's sister. Uh, Natasha's uh, sister. Yelena. Yeah. Yelena, those are the only three that Yelena I have. Yelena and Captain, uh, well, you know what? I'm ready for Red Guardian. I'm, I'm ready for Red Guardian. Guardian, Red Guardian, uh, Black Widow's sister, and uh, Winter Soldier are the only three that are gonna do anything. You yeah, don't care about US Agent? No, because I didn't care about him on the TV show, and he looked like a TV villain. He did, <laughs> I did, I did, just, be, just because of the. The, the dynamics of what he was and but and like how he was like I, I just knew that he had way more savagery in him. And so so is, this, is this their suicide? Is this is, is this Marvel's Suicide Squad? Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. I, well, even, even set it up. You know, even too, I would say like Legends of Tomorrow because we don't know if they're making them good guys or if they're doing like. You know the bad, like if they're like Peacemaker. Peacemaker is technically somewhat a good guy. He just killed people. Well, so, was he th that this is what I'm interested in is the Winter Soldier story arc a lot because it's like you went from being like un, in the underbelly and being used to do, you know, what I'm saying some really devious <laughs> shit. And then you had your redemption, and now you like to you trying to get back to not being seen as the Winter Soldier. But now you with the ragtag of people who's gonna be doing some more devious shit. It's it's because he a violent stock. That's why. That's why I'm, I I ain't worried about him no more. And then two. That's the story of all of them. He'd be like, "Yo, I was I was brainwashed into doing the shit I done." Yelena, I mean, well, you know, I was chemically imbalanced to do shit that I wasn't wanting to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing for me over here as Red Guardian. Uh, if you know, like, uh, my daddy experiment on me blew me up. Now I just be shape shifting through space now. Uh -huh. And uh, last time I checked, uh, this chick got blown up for being this guy's daddy, and then they put a chip in his head. So you ain't really bringing nothing to the table that See, got me just saying. feeling like, like, yeah, you just, you I'm a saying. thought. You still want to be in the game. Because <laughs> I feel like that, like, I feel like him Are they going to tie in uh, General Thaddeus? <laughs> well, uh, I think, wait, wait, are you talking about Ross? General Ross? Are they going to Are they gonna tie in? I know he's dead in real life. I know he's dead in real life, but how, his, his, his name after him. Like, how would they add him I think uh, they I the, think the, I think they would just the, say like they would mention that they're gonna name it after him and just say, you know, like we're calling this uh this like how they did like uh what did they call it? Like this uh oh fuck, what did they call it? Uh this group, the Thunderbolts, named after him and stuff. I think they'll acknowledge him like that because he was technically supposed to be Red Hulk. And so mm. I don't know if they're gonna replace him or if they just gonna honor him like that, kind of like how they're doing to Child of the Witch. I feel like they should recast what? that because Red Hulk is such a great character, but also we mm. never saw him turn into the Hulk. Like that yeah. would have been a perfect time to show it. He, he can do it off camera, and he, they'd be the reason the people that take him down. That's why like, you can't do it like that because then you're turning into Suicide Squad territory, Suicide Squad one, and which is why it bombed so bad. They're assuming the audience having to have seen so many things off camera that it just makes sense to us when we see it on camera. So if he was going to be Red Hulk, you need to show that transformation, show it in She-Hulk, if that's the case, and then have him mm -hmm. fight her and Bruce helps out, but she's the one who delivers the final blow. He's arrested. Now Thunderbolts comes out, Red Hulk. Yep. But I doubt that that will happen because that makes too much sense. Right. That's right, right. <laughs> but then also, too, if it's even needed, that's the thing, too, mm. like, if, it, if it's really even needed, especially how they're going about it in the MCU. But for them, it's like, even with Thunderbolts, this is a very easy equation. Like, keep it just like the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, how they did the remake with James Gunn. 
lot of action, a lot of fun, and just leave it like that. Like, you don't need to try to make the Thunderbolts the new Avengers because mm-hmm. we know that's not who they are. At all. I would love to hear... I would love to see the original script of Black Panther before Chadwick Boseman died. Like, uh, you know, uh, like yeah. what would have been, I'm saying, like, would have been a different villain? Would have been a different storyline? Like, because I'm sure that changed a lot of the MCU. Like, get, like, release that. I mean, when the movie comes out, of course, release the original script. They ain't going to do no original script. To <laughs> give you anything they can, because they're going to give you anything to compare that movie right. to, to <laughs> like it or dislike it. Yeah, because then you got because then that's what you're fighting against, and then two, you yeah. risk it going. We would have rather had this than exactly. go see uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they wanted to give, like, if Ryan Coogler wanted to give us like a little byline of what it might have been about, I would take that to just they, say to just hard. give us a little bit of that. But it's hard. They definitely yeah, did yeah. that. They definitely did that with uh, Doctor Strange. They had said they had killed um, uh, what's the, what's the black sidekick dude. Um, in this Benedict. universe, oh, and black. Oh, uh, you talking about Benedict Cumberbatch? I mean, not Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, 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 yeah, they yeah. killed him in the in the MC in the the original MCU. And when they showed that little apple box, his head Wait, was what? In there. Yeah, he said. Uh, he said they filmed it too. Um, so Mordor is dead in, in this MCU. MCU. Yeah. How? Uh, when that happened? That's what they said. They had said in the very beginning, Wanda. Uh, Mordor was uh was had found Wanda and he killed her and chopped his head off and then he said where is strange and then it went to the original open and then when they showed that little apple box if you go back and watch it they showed that little apple box on the ground his head was in that are you saying that's a deleted scene yeah it's not in it at all oh, you know okay. reason, remember when she dropped those sticks in that apple box and just yeah. randomly it showed that his head was in that they kept that shot in there. <coughs> oh, you gotta show me this, that. man. Send this to the group. Yeah, you talking about when they walking through the orchard? Yeah, yeah. And they just randomly show her dropping some sticks. Yeah, I remember she box. did the sticks. In- oh, and they, wow. and they locked it on it for a long time. His head was in there. So, so she killed him already. Yeah, in this in this uh universe, of course. But I don't know if they're gonna keep him alive now because they never showed it. But that was the original opening. Well, well, now I mean, he was he was searching he was searching for sorcerers. He said in the first one he was like, "I'm tired of all these sorcerers. They got too much power." He was hunting her down. Well, you know what? That, that, that now makes sense though too because the way Strange talked about him when he saw the other one, it kind of made it seem like he wasn't there anymore, like he wasn't a threat anymore. Well, I don't think he knew that his friend was dead. Also. Well, no, remember, they're not friends, they're enemies. Like, he remember, he kept saying, like, he tried, he kept trying to kill me, but he kept talking in him like it was past tense. Mm. Right. Okay. So, you, so, like I said, though, he might, he might have saw that and acknowledged it. I don't, I'm not sure, though, but I'm yeah. like, that's crazy, though. But it's like the same thing they said with Thor. Um, remember, they said Gore killed uh, Jeff Goldblum's character, and they didn't show that on here. Mm-hmm. But he said they shot that of him killing him. I would hate that, man. I yeah, I'm in that new Thor, man. I'm in that new checking me up, man. I got this dope ass scene with uh Christian Bell. <laughs> hey, but that's what that, yeah, but like you said, they the way that they shoot, they don't shoot in order. Like you may come mm-hmm. in thinking that you're gonna shoot for strange, and the next thing you know, you in uh, uh the King Dynasty. You're like, wait a minute, I thought I shot that for Thor. <laughs> like yeah, I, they shot, I shot this <laughs> eight years ago. Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> I didn't know I was in this. Like, why y'all didn't tell me you was in Secret Wars? I am. Could you imagine mm. though being like being cast in the MCU and you holding you holding the back, you don't tell nobody, but they cut your whole scene <laughs> and now you that nigga that's on podcast, like, yeah, man, I was I was originally <laughs> I had you know Thanos in the headlock, uh the first scene. Well, and, I stood uh, I stood in front of uh Spider Man and, and and you know everybody else and took the blow from Kane. And then that's when they was able to fight back, but you know, apparently they took that out, you know. <laughs> but um, but they also did, like we said, uh they revealed uh a, a, on top of that at D23 a new 
um, logo of Armor Wars. Uh, Don Cheadle spoke on it a little bit and stuff like that. Not too much of like any real like new detail, just only that they are moving forward with it. You know, as we did discuss in a couple of previous episodes, wasn't sure if you know Armor Wars was still happening, but it seems like they are moving forward with that as well as Loki 2. Loki 2 has already uh, uh, started shooting. They showed a few clips of it, uh, just picking up where they left off in season two. And then um, I believe, I always forget his name, but uh, the kid, the, the Asian kid from Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's, uh, enough. that's enough. And Goonies. Yes, Goonies, <laughs> yes. And Goonies, everything, yeah. everywhere uh, in, in that one too. He's now uh, cast in the uh, Loki season two. So that's gonna always be like cool. He's oh, great. Cool yeah, I wonder so who he's gonna be. be. He's supposed to be a TVA, um, not analyst, but something else that's like in a position in the TVA. Here's what's uh, interesting about Loki it's like, I wonder what role, if any, he's gonna play at all outside of his world because he's the one who introduced Kang to us. So, is he yeah. gonna have any interaction with any of the existing Avengers who would know who he is? One, two, it's like. Is he going to have because he hasn't had any appearances in anything since he got, you know, his life back in his Loki series? But right, right, now, he's going in. But right now, 616, everybody in 616 assumes that he's still dead. So that's going to be like if he pops back up to one of the people who knew him before, then it's going to be a shocker because that that may be he will be the first person that they've seen died and come back, if I'm not mistaken. <sighs> Te technically, but also too, depending on where he falls in it. Because think about it, he disappeared in 2006. And so when that happened, like they said, he became a variant. So now you have two timelines that have been split. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much depending on which one he goes to that's going to happen. Because like right now, basically, there's two 616 versions that are happening. One where Loki did not get arrested and go and go meet his fate. And then there's one where he's taken out right now. And since they didn't fix that, that's one of the branches that uh, popped off. Yeah. But I think well, I'm, he... I'm assuming CT's talking about like the main one with them. And I feel like because that would be the biggest one because like. Like er, like who everybody know like all the, the the remaining Avengers know that he's dead. So they go back to the one that we're seeing now, like this roadie that we've seen, or you know, uh, or uh, the new Captain America. Like if we if he goes back to them, that's going to be a shocker because like I said, nobody that's knows he's dead though. Actually, except, yeah, no, Rhodey and them don't know that. Yeah, Rhodey yeah. and Captain America. Nobody knows because well, they don't they don't they don't talk to him like that. No, they don't but talk was, to Thor like that. Remember, talk, Thor went into exile you're right, after you're right, that happened. Right, so you're right. those are really the only two remaining. So they may not know that. So the only ones they would really be a shocker to is the Asgardians and Thor. That would really be it. Right. Yeah, and it was 2012 because that's the Avengers that they went back to. Right. They went back to 2012. He disappeared with the, with the cube. So the only people who would know he's alive that were existing in Avengers 1 that are still alive are... The Hulk, Thor, and don't Hawkeye. the Guardians know? Don't the Guardians know? The Guardians weren't around they were in 2012. Around. Yeah, but they know who Loki is, don't they? Like they know Loki. Okay, so again, we're talking about timelines. So the timeline from present oh, no, day, right. right? The well, only they, people they would have go ahead, known God damn it, go ahead. I know I'm saying that they wouldn't have known him, but when they saved Thor, didn't he tell them what happened? He would not have had reason to tell them his brother Loki died. He just said, all of my people have been murdered. The uh, only people that he told that were that, that Loki was gone was uh, probably Rocket and I think just Rocket, because that's who he was with the entire Endgame movie. I mean, yeah. the entire Infinity War movie. Yeah. Because at, at most point they they found him where everybody was dead and picked him up in space. Right. So okay. and then, right. yeah, and so again too, they don't necessarily got to know who his brother is either because he just could have been saying his brother. They don't necessarily know who if that's Loki or not. Hold up, yeah, I'm man. sorry. This is this is good. This is good. Captain America put everything back, so technically hey, Loki Rocker. is still dead. Because if 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 he put the the, the tesseract back in his hand, no. So that so that's what I was saying about them branches. Their original timeline is fixed now. 
Right. And that's what made Loki a variant because now he's in a branch of reality that's branching off from that. But Captain America fixed the main timeline for 616 that we know. That's why they're holding Loki because he's not supposed to be here. Got you. Got yeah. You. But what I'm thinking is he's still going to be showing us those top levels of what's going on because one of they said the clips that they showed, a part of that was when they showed the three heads of the timeline, the masters of the timeline, mm -hmm. and the version he's in now, it's three Kang statues sitting there. Yeah. So I think in Loki 2 is going to tell us who, like, as as you asked uh, when we were talking about where the Secret Wars will be fought, CT, what Kangs are we going to see? Are we mm -hmm. going to see the Conqueror? Are we going to see He Who Remains? Are we going to see the Ruler? I think that's going to let us know three of the very important Kangs that we're going to see in this multiverse saga mm -hmm. from Loki 2. So I think he's going to be really telling us a lot of that and time traveling. I don't know if he's ever going to go back to his own reality. And also, too, I don't think he can get back there either. Yeah, that'd be a, that's an interesting situation. Because if he shows up in anything Avengery, er, that's going to be a toss-up. I am excited to see Armor Wars, though, because yeah. I'm a War Machine fan. Now, yeah. this is the opportunity Don Cheeto has to really? show us a hey, motherfucker, I'm War Machine. Mm -hmm. Because for the past 10 years, I've been like, hey man, Michael Jai White is War Machine, bro. Why is he not War Machine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Michael yeah. Jai White, that's one. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't really showed us any like War Machine like mm -hmm. action. Like, where, but like, that's what bro, I'm saying. Hopefully he does it yeah. now because yeah, this yeah, is right. now is your series. Because Falcon, aka Anthony Mackey, showed me, okay, I could get behind him being uh, a lead as far yeah. as Captain America by the end of the series. But, you know I what I'm saying? Not. That's the thing with these sidekicks, bro. Sidekicks, mm -hmm. that's what Kevin Feige has done. He gave all these sidekicks the opportunity to be seen as more than sidekicks. When you look at WandaVision, I didn't care about WandaVision until towards the end of it. And I was like, oh, okay, now I care. Because they didn't have origin movies or standalones. When I looked at the Hawkeye series, I still didn't care about Hawkeye. I don't either. It was more so like, all right, cool, Kate Bishop. I'll play her on a video game. Let's see what's up. But they also showed him as an aging Hawkeye. Yeah. Anytime you show an aging superhero with a family he cares more about, I can't really get behind this dude. I always relate more to the guy that doesn't have the family that's like, no, I got to stop these guys, and I got a girl that I care about, and that type of thing. But yeah. then too, but then too, what also ruined that for him was Endgame when he became Ronan. So it's yeah. like we're seeing like now we're seeing how y'all set him up, which is kind of like how he set up in the comics. It's like when stuff happens, we know Hawkeye survives. Uh -huh. like even, yeah. when, even when it was uh, old man Logan and he was, you know, walking around, you know, like the whole dystopian Earth. Hawkeye still survived, had the missing arm, the long black hair. Yeah. I think it was blind, too, and some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we know he survived. And so it's like now that's what y'all shape this Hawkeye to be. So it's like. I don't care about continuing to see him. It's yeah. like you got to have him pop in like y'all had us have him with Ronan. It's like, right. okay, if he has to be included, this is what's going on right now with him. And that's it. Yeah, they, that's what they, they showed us a better version of Hawkeye when they showed us that. The little glimpse of Ronan, we were like, no, I want that. Give us that. Like He's I don't the guy. <laughs> but he's a convicted yeah. felon. He's he should be in prison. <laughs> no, remember they no remember they expunged oh, yeah. it. Remember they, yeah, they expunged him and what uh, about Scott. Captain, uh what's his name? Uh Winter Soldier. Like like he, like you can't he just was expunged expunged too. this shit, man. They, they expunged, expunged it. it. Yeah, they expunged because remember they proved that he was brainwashed, so that's why his, his record got yeah. expunged. There's a lot of feelings in here. We, we gotta remember they white that too, happened. so that that <laughs> that's true. That that's happened. Happened. Yeah, <laughs> Now, if you'd have been like, man, they gave that to Sam Wilson, you're right. This don't seem believable. That don't seem believable. <laughs> but that been shows Morbius the all over. Morbius all over. <laughs> That's why we needed She-Hulk sooner. Because yes. then all of this yes. stuff would have made even more sense oh, with the records being like, expunged. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at these heroes, it's like, what I didn't like about watching Falcon and Winter Soldier is them being like, yo... You don't have the money to help your sister, and it's like I don't. I'm not paying like anything. Give <laughs> like <laughs> us no money. 
why was the first time that we talked about them not getting paid have to be yeah. the black guy trying to get a loan? Like you could have started yeah. it with anybody else, but you started with the black guy. Oh, that's funny. But but also but also too though they they followed suit with the woman as well because the woman yeah. also because she don't mention that she was so like all the minorities, why would I all the why would I group of join, people. yeah they was like why would I join the Avengers do they got a health plan like mm -hmm. if I get pregnant do they got maternity leave like <laughs> what what are the benefits of me being a superhero do I even get paid and it was Here's like let's real. let's do it will because god damn you bro Let's talk about She Hulk, man. Here's the thing, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. We saving this. You know why? Because you, you only got a few more minutes. We gotta leave at three thirty. So we're gonna keep it moving for the sake of being able to talk about this once the show is. We're gonna stay dedicated mm. to letting the show go, and then we're gonna talk about it. So mm. moving, moving forward, moving forward. Uh, we also did get to see a clip of uh, uh, Echo. Echo. Um, um, you know, you see what happens. You know, yeah. you know. But you know show nobody asked about. Yeah, or for but nobody asked about. Yeah, but here's the thing: I was, was I was like that about She-Hulk at first. When when they first announced She-Hulk, I had zero interest. And then after I watched the first episode, I was all in. So I right now with Echo, I'm like, all right, whatever. But I'm gonna still give it that first episode, and it may because like right now, Marvel that's they be they be grabbing me every time I said I'm not interested in this. They've been grabbing me. And everyone like it, the the only one that didn't grab me that I was actually interested in was, and and I wasn't. It was like the slight. I was like, I'm Ms. not Marvel. really interested in Hawkeye. No, Hawkeye. I, I fuck with Miss Marvel. I love no, Miss Marvel. I didn't. I'm not Hawkeye, watching that. Hawkeye is my is the, Hawkeye is the bottom <laughs> tier for me. Of, of, uh -huh. I hated okay. Hawkeye. Like I said, I only was invested in Are We Getting Kingpin? And oh shit, it's Clay in English. I I want to see him. Like that was the mm -hmm. that was the only thing I cared about in that whole series. That shit was a TV movie, and I will say, I love the man, my guy Clayton English, dude. Love that guy. I was very happy for him. I immediately text him congratulations. It was a massive look for him and for him to be in the in the MCU. Phenomenal. My thing was, urgh, why are they making this so family feel after we just saw him play Ronan in Endgame? You feel me? Um, yeah. Miss Marvel, I watched episode one and I was like, all right, I'm not the audience. It has nothing to do with race. It just has more to do with the way that no, it's they shot, set the it's show shot for you. It's shot yeah, for, shot for no, kids. No, definitely yeah, it is. is. No. Uh, I can now, definitely understand that. Like, my now, when, I see, when I see She-Hulk, oh, fam, this is a show that when I went to Miss Marvel, I was like, oh, I want to watch. I want to like it. And it was like, ah, this is for kids. When I looked at She-Hulk, I went in like, I can't wait to hate this. And yeah. it was, fire. Yeah. yeah. I loved yeah. having a low expectation for it, and it just going above and beyond. It was just like, yo, I love this. I, yeah. I love this. So, mm -hmm. but I, I hope to have the same thing maybe for Echo. And the nah. only thing I'm really hoping for, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's because like, because thing is like, she hope, <laughs> she hope you kind of know about. And so you can already see what's coming. Like with Echo, it's yeah. like you got to be kind of a hard comic book fan to know this. And so the only thing I'm even excited about with Echo, and that's if they do it like this, I, is the fighting sequences. Right, because that's of it. The fact, yeah, yeah, of course, mm -hmm. the fact that she's deaf. It's like, okay, if you can have the same fight sequence like Daredevil, Daredevil did in, in the Netflix show, yeah, then you got something yeah. with me. And but, then, and then, yeah, go ahead. Is but when you really, look at here really there. Yeah, she's deaf. She can't hear. Yeah. In real here's life. The, nigga, he uh, said yes. Here's the I fact. I think so, actually. And when you look... Actress. Fuck it. Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's a market. Because she's she's Native American and she uh, she's hearing impaired, so that's why they probably cater into that community. But go ahead, yeah. CT. Are you sure I can go now? Oh, this nigga being a... God damn, student. nigga. If it ain't you, it's deuces. It's like, fuck, can I finish this fucking sentence, nigga? <laughs> here's the yeah. thing. With Echo, bro, when you look at Hawkeye, the reason people get spinoffs is because a character pops, okay? And when a character pops, audience is like, oh, shit, I want to see their story. When I'm looking at She-Hulk and I see Wong come in, I'm like, I didn't know I love this motherfucker that much. I want to see stories with Wong, right? Wong is Iron Man. I don't care what nobody yeah. says. Wong <laughs> is the new Iron Man. I know everybody want to see the screen. They you know, didn't want it to be strange. It's yeah. Wong. He's so it's cool. He, he, because he, 
the way that they paint it, and it's like the funny thing is, shout out to the writers of She Hulk, not going to into She Hulk, but I'm just saying, shout out to the writers of it because they realize he popped to where they're like, okay, we know you want to see more Wong. It's like, yes, I want to see more Wong. So when you show me Echo on Hawkeye, I did not. We were like, we already knew she was getting a spinoff when we were watching the show. And I'm like, I don't want to see her get a spinoff because she's not likable. When you have a lead character, they have to be likable. You have to want to see them. In Hawkeye, I wanted to see the mother from Kate Bishop. I wanted to even see uh, the swordsman, who the guy that uh, the mother oh, was yeah. dating. Yeah. I also wanted to see, uh, like we say, Clayton English, his character... I would have loved to see anybody else get a spinoff other than Echo. She and was not interesting to me. Because they also, too, they didn't deliver Echo enough. So it was like, yo, if you're going to give me this character that nobody really knows and stuff, you didn't prep it up enough in Hawkeye. Like what could what should have happened is Echo should have had the suit the whole time after the auction. Mm -hmm. And that leads mm -hmm. Clayton to come, uh, leads Clint to come to her. So that way, it's like, okay, this is more of a top villain rather than this just being this side person that you're going to have us have this hero overcome and learn this stuff. And it was like, I don't care. I'd like, I don't care that what? your drug dealer daddy got shot and it was your cousin's fault. <laughs> yeah. But they're setting it up. They're setting up the new Daredevil and they're going to have Kingpin in it. And, and like, it's, it's, it's a diverse hire because it's all Native American cast, backstory. So they set it up because now she's going to be in Daredevil. So I have I no mean, problem with her being in Daredevil. My problem is, and my problem is not with Native Americans. First of all, this is their country. <laughs> Let's just start there. My problem is likability. I have, I can't tell you if you ever watched a show called a uh, Banshee. They had, oh, they had so many amazing Native American actors in this show. To where I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realize how badass Native Americans were in this sense because they never get a chance to be shown in this light. It's not about her being Native American. It's about her character not being likable and popping off the screen to get yeah, her yeah. own show. Because uh, e even to that point, uh, that Hulu movie, uh, The Predator Went Pray. Like, Fire. Uh, she's she Native American. She, but again, she rarely had to talk. She, she didn't have a lot of dialogue, but again, too, we got behind her because of the way they presented her and stuff, yeah. too. And it's yeah. like Echo wasn't presented like that. You no. were presented as a, a D list character. It's like bad, ah. bad guy. No, it was. It was like bad guy, underboss, underboss, henchman, Echo. And yeah. it's like you didn't give us enough to where it's just like, okay, you need to show me how badass this person is. Like, even with her being deaf, her fight scenes, you didn't make it fully come together for us to like because we you see how daredevil is when he when he blind, it's like yo, all the stuff he be putting together when he doing stuff, yeah, yeah. give us that with her. Oh, I'll see give you a this deaf person and a blind person team up together. That's gonna be a dope ass idea. You out of control. I will say this. <laughs> When you look at when you look at uh not Echo but Yelena, I would have loved to seen a Yelena get a show. I definitely because it's would. like, oh my god, she popped, she was likable, and they introduced her character in this movie. And she has a way better reason for it because she blipped. So her yeah. fight figuring out what happened to the widow program. Come on now, that would have mm -hmm. been a hard yeah. spin-off. Come on now. Especially like when she when they showed her in Hawkeye and she came back and how the bathroom was changing was and stuff like that. I was, scene. I was so scene. in the scene of what's finna happen to her. And it was just like, okay, but they didn't get like, you. Also, you gotta think about also with Elena's character. Like the fact that like the Marvel fans love Natasha Romanoff. We've been built, we we've, we've been with her for this time. You get put in this movie and you outshine. This character that we've been with for 10 plus years, like that is a huge testament to you as a character, as an actor, as like just like you really killed that role to the point where people are like, all right, we was upset that they killed off Black Widow. But if she takes the role, we good. We good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like she killed it that she killed it that much. We were ready to see her be the new widow because she was so yeah. likable she popped off screen she was funny she was charismatic yeah. i can go on and on so when i look at the young lady playing echo it was like i can't think of a scene where i wasn't annoyed by her in it i was like every scene was annoying even when they had their final fight and he got it through her head 
I did not do this. Right. And she's like, huh. And it was like, oh, was, my God. It was the same look every time it was this. Exactly. <laughs> every like, scene. I told you that it wasn't me. And this is the person that killed your father. I want you to save this scene. This clip right here. When y'all start liking him, like I told y'all, no, 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 and, and no, no, it's gonna be no, fire. But, but no, but that's what I'm getting to. Like, if you, like I said, if you do the elements of like Daredevil's fight scene, if you give us a good backstory of this, it does have that potential. I'm just saying for you know, and I can only speak for myself that as of right now, they didn't give me enough to sell me to be excited for when Echo drops. So it's no. like again, too, I'm coming in with a low expectation, and it might be just like She Hulk. That shit. That, just wow, yo, yeah. And then speaking of which, to the same thing for on the chopping block with that is Daredevil because we did learn that um you know uh Daredevil is coming back. It's gonna get eighteen episodes, but it is Woo, not eighteen. Yeah, yeah. And it right is not season four. This is indeed a reboot. So this is season one of Daredevil: Born Again. I have no idea no what that cat, means. No original cat characters. No, because Kingpin is in it. Charlie Cox is in it. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't said anyone else, but Rosario Bobby. Dawson has expressed that she wants to come back playing her character in the new Daredevil. Um, I think they did say something about uh, Foggy also mentioning that he wants to come back. So I, I hope Red here come back. What was her name from a uh, True Blood? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Jessica. Woo, yeah, love her. Man. Yeah, man, Me I too. love her. That's a, so I mean, if they, they have the same universe. They, they, in Daredevil, they definitely said stuff like, you know, the green man upstairs and I'm not a man throwing hammers around. They said stuff like that in Daredevil. So they definitely acknowledged the MCU. So if that being said... But the said, MCU definitely acknowledged them. So that's 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 the caveat. That's their out. They was like, yeah, y'all y'all acknowledged us, but we never said about y'all. So that's why they're able to do this born again and everything like that. But they somewhat acknowledging them because it, it see, that's a very thin line. That's a very yeah. thin line of what they're doing because even in Hawkeye, technically Kingpin is not Netflix Kingpin. And uh you you mute CT. Uh, and he has right and he has more powers now. Like if you notice, he has super strength now, like how he yeah. threw Kate right, and stuff right. like that. So this is technically a different kingpin in yeah. a sense. And then the same thing with like uh Daredevil, you know, he has on the different suits now and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's like there may be slight alterations mm -hmm. like that, but it's just like that. I am very curious to see what you they mean by reboot. You think, the Netflix, you think the Netflix defenders, all those groups, is a different uh universe? No, I'm gonna tell you why. No, they ain't they wouldn't have bought all those properties and showed them on Disney Plus if they were gonna reboot them all. If that was the case, that they just left them on Netflix and created their own. But for them to yeah. buy the properties and have Charlie Cox coming back, they're doing just like they did with Netflix, testing the waters. Then they're going to probably redo the vendors and redo uh, the properties that popped. I do believe that they would probably recast Iron Fist, though. I don't know if they bought his. Did they buy his? They bought it. Yeah, it's on there. Ah, oh, they, ah. they have, no, they have been talking about that. Like they The disrespect. Like, yeah, we want, we want three. We, we, no, yeah. no, but we got four. No, 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 because they're supposed to be making uh Iron Fist Asian, because that was the big <laughs> that was the big thing about it. They was like, you need more four. representation, so they was just like, we want everybody except him. We you know what they will do? Here, would you do this though, as an actor, if they were like, yo, we recast an Iron Fist, and you were Iron Fist, but we're gonna have you play uh the brother-in-law. Remember the guy that he grew up with? Oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna have you play him instead of Tom Pelvery. What do you What do you yeah. think? Would you do it? Wait, yes. What, has, has he done anything since then? What has he put? What has he put? Has he done? I'll tell you right now. Well, he was an old disrespect. No, 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 he not was, Tom Pelfrey. He's talking about the guy who played Iron Fist. Oh, uh, oh, disrespect. he was in something recently. It's it's a pride was, thing. You definitely have to call your pride. <laughs> You hey, but pride, pride, and when you and when you ain't and when you ain't actively working, your pride get pushed a little bit aside. So <laughs> if you ain't actively doing it, then he may be like, "All right, look, I, I got to get in." Yo, but, to, but to get benched in your own series, <laughs> that's tough. That's then, tough. That's tough. <laughs> like, yo, for real, like, just not for real. Like, CT, imagine if you were head of a show, yeah, you been starred for two seasons. They'd be like, "Hey, listen." 
we're gonna bring Dion Lack in and we're gonna have you. <laughs> He's gonna play your part, but you're gonna play his brother. That's what would happen. So here's the thing. He's been working. He's been working consistently. He just finished a, a series called Dickinson. Ten episodes last year. He did a movie. He also excuse me, did a six episode show called Swimming with Sharks. Now he just got done doing two more movies. So he's been working, but okay. nothing like uh he's right. done. Okay, uh, because Dickens is with the chick that played Kate Bishop. That's that that's that one on Apple. Okay, that, show, that makes with, sense. With, uh, Emily Dickinson. The so I movie. don't know, you know, Tom Pelfrey was is amazing. If you saw him yeah. in Banshee as well, he was phenomenal. He he killed it in Ozark as oh, the, yeah. as the bipolar yeah. brother, he killed yeah. that role. Yeah. So I could I could see it, but uh I don't know, man. Like, I like, like how you said, uh, CT. I don't see them bringing them back and not using them. Yeah. yeah, it's like, why would you do it? And then, in the same sense, when you see all these actors, bro, fire. Yeah, and uh, um, Kristen Ritter already said, like, she definitely down to come back as Jessica Jones. And they was like, she's just waiting for the call. That's good that she's waiting for the call. Anyway, I would love to see. <laughs> Y'all gonna put Y'all some respect on Jessica respect. Jones' name, all right? That show, season two, everybody did an incredible job. It, I don't want to remember now because I'm gonna get an audition for <laughs> I think, it. I think you mistake a season three because we even counting that. They did three seasons. Yes, two was yeah. with the mom. Two was with. Yeah. Two, was with the mother. Yeah. two was with the mother. Three is her and her best friend. Yeah. Best friend. No, wait a second. Let me look this up. I think they only did two seasons. Her friend got powers, right? Yeah. Because wasn't that the third season? I thought that was only season two. Yeah, that was season two. Hold on. She definitely did three seasons. I'm looking at it right now. Three seasons? Because I forgot who was her third one. What was her third one about? Trash, yo. Um, because I remember the last one, she was in like a subway station, and then they were uh, about to give her her next case or some stuff like that. Damn, what was that third one about? Yeah, three seasons. You're right. And what about? I don't remember Hunter? season three. I only remember the season with her mom, and then I remember them showing shades of her best friend getting powers. But I don't remember season three at all. That's how bad it must. Oh, have she been. yeah, she was shooting up like she became like a junkie. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah not, that's what she. I don't yeah, that's that was like what the third one was. So that was like the main arc, and then it like switched up to something else. But I can't remember what it is. I think it has something else to do with like Killgrave or something. I just I can't remember. Um, now but, that season uh, one was fire. Yeah, but they also said that uh, uh, old boy said that he was down to come back as Punisher too, and supposedly they are. I hope so. Something. They are Man. setting something up for Punisher. Apparently, he can't um, not be Punisher. Punisher. He's the new Punisher, bro. He oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, like that's him. He was born to play that role, like Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Iron Man, yeah, yeah. and they gotta still be just as gruesome. And so, uh, so oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with the defenders and everybody else. So, I hope they do get the rollout just like Daredevil is and being able to get their chance to shine in the MCU. Uh, we also got news for Captain America for uh, New World Order, New Love. Oh, we also found out that the leader from the uh, original Incredible Hulk is going to be in this movie as well. Uh, uh, no details. Uh, Whose echo is that, bro? Y'all hear that? Yeah, yeah. I know it's a TV screen on behind you. Is that that wouldn't project? The TV screen? Yes, yeah, the TV screen behind you will have turned on while we were filming. But who's fucking? Echo? Let me mute myself. Let me see if you. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. check, check, check. Uh, I'm claiming you, my, claiming you. Yeah, it's not me. Mute yourself, Dion. Yeah. Yo, 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 boom, yo, yo, boom, yo. Boom. All right, it's not Dion. Yeah, Mute yourself, right. deuces. Check, boom, check, boom, check. Boom. Well, look at that. Idiot. Idiot. Look at that. Hey, when you keep that, I start turning down my speaker a little bit. Like, let me turn that down. Yeah, look like, how he called it out. Look at that. Look at yo, that. Yo, <laughs> like, yo, imagine if he found a killer like that. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. And there y'all have it, ladies and gentlemen. We found the killer. We found the killer. <laughs> yo, please do that in villainy. Please Man, do that. Man, look at well, that. Mm-mm-mm. Look who's the killer. Look who's the killer. <laughs> Mm-mm. He was the first one to say, "Oh, whoa, no! I'm the I'm the administrator. It cannot possibly be me. What am I thinking?" 
<laughs> man. <laughs> but yeah, man, we like we were saying, like Captain Captain America Four was announced. Uh, nothing really given about it. Just saying that um, you'll get to see a little bit more of like what the New World Order is and setting up. However, I guess, you know, like the U.S. is taking everything after the blip uh, with him being a new Captain America and those things have to deal with just actually donning that suit and whatever that new threat is going to be. Um, and to be honest with you, that also could be the part where we might start seeing mutants. Hmm. I'm not excited for Captain America. I'm not either. Yeah. Uh, I'm not either. I don't know. I, I, know I mean, what it's black, just when I want to. A lot of shoes to a lot of a lot of room in them shoes to fill because people I like Captain America one, but a lot of people don't like Captain America one first Avenger. People like love it. Winter Soldier and then Civil War. But realistically, you can't those aren't solo films. He had a team up in yeah. part three where you had every superhero in the Marvel universe at the time right. without the Hulk and Thor. And then part two was introducing the winter soldier, introducing the Falcon, introducing all these separate characters. He even he had black future. widow. He was a future. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? He was a future. So it's like, he's never had a solo film except the one he did and people don't like. So Which I thought was great. I love first Avenger Cause it was just yeah, like uh, the cartoon, but now, uh, now he's fighting an uphill battle because if he doesn't have a lot of cameos or a team up or like y'all just talking about the mutants being introduced, you know, people aren't going to like it. But I'm excited to see Anthony Mackie get this opportunity to be the lead, to really be Captain America and Falcon. I just the only thing I regret is that he didn't take that super soldier serum in the series. Yeah. Also, I just if you're going to make this movie, you got to make it real. If somebody don't drop the end bomb in this Come movie, on! Oh, yeah. see it. Somebody, somebody got to call him a nigga. Nigga got to get said this movie. I, he like, I am not, not going to respect no nigga Captain America. You got to see all that. Yeah, we need, I got to see somebody, somebody in Mississippi in this movie. Fight somebody in Alabama and Mississippi. He's like, oh. Yes. The yes. Real he ain't my Captain is. America. Not our Captain. Yeah, that's it. Not our yeah. Captain. Not our captain, not yeah. this guy. And he I got wings, that. which think he is an eagle. So that's not my uh, guy. I'm interested to see, but you know, you never know. Here's the thing, dudes. I'm gonna call you out because you did not say you had to leave early in the email. You didn't tell none of us what was going I on. I didn't. I right. didn't. I didn't. And now you're saying you got to go. That's because y'all y'all know I, I I I still work a nine to five. So like I'm, yeah, doing I, I'm glad you acknowledged that. You said. I can do this specific time because unless y'all can push it 30 minutes, I'll, but I'll, I'll be there and we already in it. So you should be free during this time. Yep. I should, but when you answer to a boss, I I, I can't control that. Here come that boss. <laughs> you hear that shit? Mm -hmm. See, I'm sitting here just, okay, 3.30. I know we got to be Stick it beyond tight. I got to leave now. Woo, niggas I'm ain't worth shit, boy. I know, man. Listen, listen, I, I don't have the I don't have the luxury of having a full free day. <laughs> oh, you hear that, fellas? You hear how he's talking to us? I don't have the luxury of having a full oh, wow. free day. What you mean? We don't Not have free day. Right. Now I'm just digging my grave. Woo. This brother out but, of control. But we, but we can cap it off because there's not uh, too many things that were left. And we've already pretty much covered everything yeah. Marvel that was announced. Uh, the only things that we did miss was uh, Werewolf by Night, um, which I am excited to see. Mm. Um, just because it's Halloween. <clears throat> um, nothing, uh, and, and the fact that Man Thing is in there. That's just I just want to see how they're going to do him. I'm hoping that they said that the trailer that they released was in black and white, and that was just for the trailer. I'm hoping mm. that's not true, and they do both versions and let us see either a black and white one or one that is in color because it looks like it is going to have that Vincent Price type of aesthetic feel um, yeah. and old school kind of like Alfred Hitchcock type of shot. So I'm curious to, to really see Werewolf by Night, and it's kind of just like um, almost like a who done it. Uh, same thing like Villainy. That's literally what almost like Werewolf by Night is, and it's just like who is the actual werewolf amongst all of these hunters and we go they're gonna find out that night uh who it is so i'm excited to it. see that it's um, a good place they, to add blade or moon knight just to kind of you know throw that in there but that would you be know, yep. or yeah. even a john or even uh something about ghost rider like a legend of ghost rider or something like that not even having to say johnny blaze just like a legend of that or or some kind of 
demon that they have in the uh, uh, MCU, like Mephisto. Like this would also be mm. a great thing to show something that uh, regards to Mephisto. And then last, um, it's up to you if you want to call it least. It's up to y'all. Uh, the Marvels. They let us know about what was going on with the Marvels. And, What's going on with them? Um, so pretty much it's just showing that it will show all three of them and it clears up what happened in Miss Marvel. Um, so you know, I know y'all not gonna see it, but at the end of Miss Marvel, uh Brie Lawson's Marvel and um Kamala switch places, and so Brie's in her house, and we don't know where Kamala went. So we assume that she went in the direction of wherever Brie's character was, but that's actually not true. She actually swapped places with uh monica's character and so they find her in an astronaut suit in the same space on the same spaceship that nick fury is in and so you see kamala kind of floating and she hits the glass to see nick fury and tap she said can i be an avenger and she just keeps floating as they as she's trying to get yeah. some help is that so, so what is that the tag of the final episode Oh, no, 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 no. The tag yeah. was when her and Brie switched and it just went yeah. up. You saw Brie in her room and then saw like all of like Kamala's artwork of her and she just like, yo, what the fuck am I? And it just yeah. goes off. How so, did that yeah. switch happen though? So it's supposedly they're, yeah, so they haven't shown it, but it has to do something with all of them are connected somehow. Because it also uh, they show where Monica ended up, which is where Breeze was, and I forgot exactly what she was doing. I can't, I can't remember, remember at the end of WandaVision, she's like, uh, Nick, Nick Fury wants to see you where up there. Oh, and that's how we saw her, mm -hmm. and that's how Kamala ends up in her suit. But we don't know what Brie was doing, but they show where she was, and I think she was in front of like some Kree uh warriors or something like that. Before she got swapped out, but that's where uh, Monica currently is. So, and this is what happened in the trailer that you saw? Oh, uh, just the snippets that they showed. It was just a little clip and snippets of what they showed. So it wasn't the actual mm. trailer. It was just snippets that they gave at D twenty three. So interesting. It, yeah. So it's interesting to see like exactly what the Marvels are gonna do, but it still hasn't really given us enough to just get hyped to want to go see it. Like how mm. everyone's saying, it still just kind of does. Okay, we'll see what these Marvels are gonna be about. Hmm. I'm interested now. Yes, me. However, I hope I hope they introduce Rogue, and she sucked the life out of Brie Larson. <laughs> <laughs> Brie Larson, that. I love Brie Larson as an actress. I also think separately she's very beautiful. I assumed that Miss Marvel, and you know that's how that's a testament to how Robert Downey Jr. played this role. I assumed that every time I see a new Marvel character get their own movie, I'm like, oh, this is about to be the new Iron Man, right? Because they're going to take on the uh, the leadership role. And we know Captain Marvel is so powerful. When I saw her leading the film, there were moments that were star makers. She was already a star, but I'm talking about in the comic book sense, likability factor. There are, there are star makers. And there was one line that could have made her a massive lovability of an actor in this film and she didn't seize it it was a scene where she was on the ship and she was fighting everybody and she had a she had her hands bound right yeah like the cuffs on and then she goes up to a guy and she was like uh you get the key to these no okay well i'll just fight you anyway and i was like oh if you would have delivered that even a smidget a little differently with a little bit yeah. more charisma mm -hmm. everybody would have been with you and that was one of those lines that in the movie theater it just like it went flat. And I was like, damn. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll try to see exactly what's gonna happen with the Marvels too, man. We'll keep hope just like we'll keep hope with Echo. But we want to know uh from y'all at the uh in the comments below, what was your favorite takeaway from D23 and what are you excited to see coming next within the MCU? And that's gonna wrap up this episode. You know, we talked about Marvel, all the D23 announcements, what we like, what we didn't like, but we thank y'all for sitting here and checking this out and always just being a part of this blurred community where we get to come and express ourselves, talk about comic books, nerd stuff, and all things around. So before we get out of here, I know Deuces has to shoot, so the C uh, CT, so I'm going to let y'all go first with uh, letting people know how to support y'all, end off with Dion, and I'll close this thing out if y'all need to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first thing I would say, man, again, as always, I love being a part of this. Thank you guys, man, for always having me and everything like that. Um, I can finally talk about it. If you... Uh, on the 23rd of September, my first video with Watch Mojo will be dropping. Uh, I'm now a contracted 
voice actor for Watch Mojo. I'll be reading some of their top 10 lists. So make sure you pull up on the 23rd. Check that out. I think my first list is top 10 DC scandals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I, I, I go there. I go there. Only <laughs> Ezra Miller's number one. <laughs> we only got There's 10. a whole lot. But yeah, but yeah so that, I'm excited for just, you know, to go on this journey and everything like that. So I, it would mean so much for y'all to pull up and check that out. Congratulations, man. Congrats, bro. Yes, bro. indeed. Um, CT? Man, Villainy, uh, when does this air? This will air next Friday. Ah, well, no, this, we Friday. Just, this Friday. Okay. So if you're watching right now, the final episode of Villainy will air Tuesday, September 20th. It uh, ends our sixth episode run on Caffeine. I hope that you guys can tune in. It will be uh, an honor. If you don't know how to download uh, Caffeine, it's free. Just sign up and uh, check out Villainy on All Def. I am also going to be um, completing my interview at Dion's office. If you see his background, I'm going there right now. So check us out. Telling him my qualifications in the background. <laughs> Dion, you and your great background is up. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what up? Uh, this is Dion Lack. Uh, great stuff happening down the pipeline. Um, I, too, will be having a show airing on um, caffeine uh, within the next two weeks. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> yep, we've been shooting the promos to kind of promote for the space and and uh, the, the the venue. I'm going to have CT uh, hosting. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. My guy Will is a, one of the uh, uh, the contestant cousins, if you will. Um, it's going to be the, a co-host uh, with CT and KB, uh, Kanisha Bus. Um, if you are in Los Angeles, uh, this is the, a podcast space where you can shoot uh, podcasts. Obviously, uh, four cameras, four mics will be here very soon. We have another location on, on the other side. It is under construction, but it will be done tomorrow. Um, super excited about that side. Um, and uh, yeah, man, that's it. Follow me at Dion mm. Life. Yes, indeed. Nice. Yes, indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out another episode of Straight Out of Comic Book. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notifications so when these episodes are dropping. And make sure you check out the audio version on all audio podcast platforms, iTunes, Apple, the whole shebang. Also, check out Arcade Tokens. We have a new podcast coming out on there soon as well. And as well as uh, just be on the lookout for some other stuff I got coming up, man. I'm at 93%. I'm coming back. I'm coming nice. back. I'm at 93%. And I got a lot to show y'all. A lot to show y'all. Oh. So, yes, thank y'all for checking out another episode of Trying a Comic Book. And we shall catch you next time. Boom. Boom.